he and my old friend Hank Worden had been uh, had played brothers in John Ford's Wagon Master, so we got to talk about that. It was an incredible experience. I didn't think uh, Jim Arness liked me on that show. He he didn't talk to me much, and he he seemed kind of withdrawn. And I it was different from what I had ever heard. Melody Ranch became a character in that series, Deadwood. It became Deadwood. On television, usually, you see everybody's clean and there's, there's no dirt on anything. Suddenly, the streets were really dirty, muddy, filthy. So was the language. <laughs> but it was a great show. It starred Powers Booth. It starred Ian McShane. And from uh, Justified, Timothy Oliphant, who came, seemed like he came out of nowhere to play the marshal. And the clothes were great, the sets were fantastic, and we are very fortunate to have Ellsworth with us here today, Jim Beaver. Come on up. Welcome. Thank you, it's great to be here. Not only did he do uh, Deadwood, for several seasons, and uh, it was only on for three. It should have been on for more, but he got married on it. His character got married on the show. Did two of the Gunsmoke TV movies with Jim Arness. Before we talk about Melody Ranch and how muddy it was, <laughs> tell us about, as, a, as an actor who had you know come to town working his way up to get cast with Jim Arness in a Gunsmoke movie. Well, um... I came out here for something other than acting. I was actually researching a book. I write film history on the side. I came out here and uh, there was an actor that probably most of you remember named Hank Worden. Uh, Hank was like a grandfather to me. He was and, old Mose in The Searchers. All he wanted was a rocking chair. Hank put me up at his place for about the first four years I was here. And that was a real experience. I got to know a lot of the people he knew, but I began getting a little acting work. And then um, I guess around 89, 90, something like that, uh, Jerry Jameson and this fellow over here, Jim, cast me in uh, the first of the two Gunsmoke movies I did. And um, that was pretty cool. Um, it was very cool. I was flown out to... Um, I think the first one we did was in Arizona, wasn't it? Yeah, in, yeah, Tucson. So I got to work on the old Tucson streets where uh, um, Rio Bravo and so many other things had been shot, and that was cool. Um, about a year later, I got to work on the set of my favorite movie growing up as a kid, The Alamo in Brackettville, Texas. Um, didn't get to be in that because I was only eight, but... Showing up on the set the first day of uh, Gunsmoke to the Last Man, um, I saw James Arness standing there um, as I was getting out of the van. And uh, first off, I had ridden to the location with Morgan Woodward, which, uh, well, among other things, it meant I didn't say much on the trip. But uh, uh, it was that was a great experience because I I was really respectful of of him and his career. And then. I get out of the van, and there's, standing with his back to me, is that famous back you see in the opening of the Gunsmoke show. And I went, oh, I think that's him. <laughs> and, um, and I was able to, uh, I was able to talk to him about, um, he and my old friend Hank Worden had been, uh, had played brothers in John Ford's Wagon Master. So we got to talk about that. It was an incredible experience. I was just telling Jim, I didn't think, Jim Arness liked me on that show. He he didn't talk to me much, and he he seemed kind of withdrawn. And I it was different from what I had ever heard. And I thought, man, I've done something terrible here because uh, uh, this hero of mine doesn't like me. And uh, and I never figured out what it was. Finished the movie, and then about eight ten months later, they were doing another one, and I got a call to come do a different role in it. Arness came up to me, and it was like. I was his long lost son. And he said, you know that line I didn't want to do in the last movie that they gave to you? He said, 
you got such a laugh, I wish I'd kept it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think maybe that had something to do with it. I got a laugh that should have been his. Um, it, was, it, was a really, it was a real treat to work with Jim Ones. He, he turned out to be a, a, a lovely man and a great influence in my life. How did Deadwood come about for you? Deadwood was one of those things. When you're an actor, you know, you, you get audition material, you get the sides, you get the script, maybe if you're lucky, and you look at it and you go, maybe I can do this, or, or I think I got a handle on this, or, oh, this one's going to be tough, but I'll give it a try. And I read the audition scene for Ellsworth, for Deadwood, and I thought, this one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I may not get it, but it's mine. Uh, I never saw a piece of material in my life that seemed to fit more what I felt I did best. And uh, cuss? Well, there was that. Uh, well, I was a preacher's kid. I didn't know anything about cussing. Uh, any of you believe that? Um, I remember after I got the part, uh, well, I had done, I had done a, a bit part in Walter Hill's movie, Geronimo. And... Uh, uh, and this was a good 10, 12 years earlier. And I came in, and, I didn't, and I'd done an episode of NYPD Blue for David Milch. And, but it was long enough ago, I didn't figure either one of them remembered me. And uh, so I did my audition, and uh, David was sitting there smiling. And I looked over at Walter Hill, and he said, Well, I'm glad to see you remember everything I taught you. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing I knew, I had the part. But... Uh, Right after the show premiered, I was listening to NPR. They were doing a review of the show. It wasn't exactly a review. It was more discussion of the language, uh, both the poetry of the language and the other stuff of the language. And uh, uh, they said, well, you know, uh, here's, here's an example of what we're talking about. And they ran my opening monologue from the pilot. But on NPR, it was sort of like, Bleep 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 bleep. Now I recognize my voice, but I'm not sure anybody else did. Well, that that controversy about the language, everybody did say it was like Shakespeare, but the real controversy, and I think that's one of the things that they were trying to generate, is controversy, so people would be talking about the show Deadwood. Is that did people really talk like that? Well. You know, that's always been a, a source of debate. And in fact, David uh, addressed it in one episode where he had a character say something uh, along with the line, as they said in ancient Rome, blah, 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 blah. And another character says, did they really talk that way back then? <laughs> um, but I'll tell you, I was at the same time that I was shooting the, the show, uh, I was working on a screenplay of my own uh, uh, set in New Mexico in the 1870s, almost exactly the same time. And I was digging through old uh, U.S. Cavalry court-martial transcripts. And there's not a word you ever heard on Deadwood that wasn't in those transcripts really? from 1877. So I, mm. I, I will contend with anyone who says they didn't talk like that. Mm. They just didn't write it down. <laughs> Bill Sanderson, who was in that as well, a great character actor who was in the, the, the Newhart show. Uh, he was Larry, and this is my oh, brother Daryl and my other brother Daryl. Okay, <laughs> a terrific actor, and was a regular on Deadwood also. I uh, was on a flight with him one time going back and forth to Vancouver on some stuff, and he said, I'm dying on this show. He says that the scripts, I get the script, the pages, they change from lunch to after lunch, and I says, I, we have to memorize all this stuff. I don't know what I'm going to do. What was it like? <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll tell you what it was like, particularly in terms of Bill Sanderson. Bill Sanderson played E.B. Farnham, the hotel owner. Uh, Bill's a wonderful actor, but he has a little bit of trouble with lines. I mean, he, had, uh, he, he works at it. He works really hard to get his lines because he has to work really hard to get them. And he would get these monologues that David would write, sometimes the morning we shot, and he would struggle with them. And once David Milch realized that Bill struggled with these... They got longer and longer. How cruel. And longer. And we would come in and say, oh, great. 
we only got one scene today. We'll be out of here early. And somebody will say, no, it's a Bill Farnham monologue. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, we had, we had so little preparation, and it completely changed my way of acting. I used to be one of those actors. I got to have the script a week in advance. I got to have some time to work on it. And on Deadwood, we almost never had time to work on it. You maybe got it the night before. Uh, often you got it the night before. You stayed up all night learning it. And then you went in in the morning and David would change it all. That's what I heard. But there was one night I went home and I asked the first AD what we were shooting the next day. And uh, he said, I don't know. Uh, We'll shoot something. <laughs> now, now most, net, most network hour-long shows, you'll have seven days, maybe eight days to shoot it. What? These were hour-long episodes. How these many days did episodes. you have? Now, these, this wasn't network. This so, is HBO. So it, it's a movie. Yeah, it was HBO. So an hour-long episode was an hour-long episode, not, not 42 minutes like they are on NBC or CBS now. But we would just shoot until we got done. My favorite story is I, I was handed a call sheet one night on my way home, and I looked at it, and it said, day 19 out of 10. <laughs> so we had... Uh, your average hour drama on network, I guess, shoots from July to March or April, uh, 22 episodes or so. We would shoot July to April for 13 episodes. What was really great about it was that everything we did turned out kind of looking like a movie and not looking like something that had been rushed to get it done in eight days. Um, well, they do look great. And part of it, I think, is the location because they dressed Melody Ranch to look like a Deadwood and it, it transformed the look of other Westerns on television as well. The first time I ever went to Melody Ranch was when we were having... Uh, the table read for the pilot. This would have been in November of 2002. And we all gathered there on uh, the soundstage to sit around the table and meet each other and, and uh, read the script. And I took a little walk around the town. I said, oh, that's a nice western town. We'll, th this will be fun. It was, I mean, there was nothing set up yet because we weren't ready to shoot, but uh, it was not, it looked like gun smoke. I mean, it looked like flat streets and dry streets and buildings and then two or three weeks later we came back to start the pilot and it looked like Nagasaki <laughs> they had they had put in mounds in the road uh, because apparently they didn't have road graders in 1876 <laughs> and they had brought in so much mud and so much water and so much other wet stuff and then they had they had filled the streets with incredible detail it was like stepping back into time it wasn't like any set i've ever been on in my life it was like stepping out of a time machine and going well this is what it was like this is what it was like um and it smelled so <laughs> Good. You know, man jim jim before you take off i want everybody to uh to know that uh, we're going to change tape but i want everybody to to remember jim from justified where he played the bad guy in a 13 episode arc that was great television really wonderful Thank scripts you. i didn't think i was bad oh but. you <laughs> he was the bad guy and that he was good as the bad thank guy. you very much thank you jim